Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic today. Today, I have an important topic for you. What to do if you owe the IRS money in a very difficult economic environment? This is a very important topic that applies not only when there is a recession, but also when you personally are going through some tough times. All right. Now, this is the Sweetie Kiwi show. We cover a lot of stuff here. We cover everything from finance to uh, travel to sports and science the relationship, health, whatever it is we call the whole nine yard. Here is today's premise. The premise of today's conversation is there is no such a thing as good time when it comes to owing taxes, but a difficult economic environment may absolutely be the worst time to fall behind on your fiscal obligations. If you find yourself in this situation, here is how you should handle things with a tax man. Let's get into it right away. Now, first thing you need to do you want to seek free legal and fiscal help. Now, there is a variety of sources where you can get free legal help. You don't have to pay an attorney unless you have the, the you know the, the money for it. You don't need to hire a CPA or an EA, an enrolled agent to kind of cover you. No. The IRS, if you go to the IRS website, there are several resources. Now, you can get something called, you can get free assistance through something called the Volunteer Income Tax Assistant assistance they have several branches in several communities across the united states so if you go to the irs website www.irs.gov and uh, put volunteer income tax assistance and put your zip code you should be redirected to the right branch you can also you can also access another program called tax counseling for the elderly tce and this also exists in various communities and this this kind of program is very helpful for seniors another way to get uh, free legal and fiscal help is to contact the irs directly now we've tried it ourselves within the team and we've seen that it worked 80 percent of the time sometimes you have to be on the phone for a while depending upon the the volume of calls but it is very effective so those centers the the the, the, the taxpayer assistance centers they are the the they, they have representatives that will listen to you or if you want to go to their office if you you again if you go to the website and type in your zip code you should be able to have the address of you know the the nearest office and you go in there and you just sit with them and try to have a face-to-face -face conversation where now remember though before you go please bring all your paperwork and have a clear idea of what you really want a lot of taxpayers go to those uh, offices with no clear idea of what they want and the conversation just is not fruitful for them because again you got to have a vision of what you want for the irs to listen to you and see if they could they can grant you your request another way to get to get free legal help is to contact the american bar association now the aba has some pro bono opportunities they have on staff you know, um, some very qualified lawyers who are comfortable offering their services for free. So you can get a, you can get access to a great catalog of fiscal experts who will help you with your case. Again, depending upon availability, because there is everything free takes time, right? So depending upon the the, the queue, you, you know your 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 number in the queue. Yeah. You can also reach out to law schools and taxation departments at colleges and universities, right? A lot of top universities and colleges in the United States maintain a pro bono office, a pro bono lab, where they voluntarily and freely come to, you know, really help, you know, citizens. So you might want to double check that. Another way, another place where you can get free legal help is through charities, right? Community organizations also are great at that they allow you to understand that they, they, they will explain to you if you qualify for their services if you are a member of this if you're if you are a service member you can qualify through a program called mill tax this is a program that has received the blessing of the the, the uh, of the pentagon and the va department of veteran affairs and they offer free legal and fiscal assistance so if you have problem if you have fallen behind in paying your taxes and you are a service a service member reach out to them 
and again if you go to the VA website or you go to the the DOD website you get all the all the information you just got to tap in mail tax go to Google and just tap mail tax DOD or VA one thing I also want to talk to you about is the fact that you have uh, you know so number one you get the, the free legal help number two and this is very important don't pay the IRS right away now we currently are in a situation where the IRS has allowed some kind of the Department of uh, the Treasury has allowed an extension of three months so exceptionally for this year taxpayers are not required to file their, their taxes by April to April 15th they have to they have three more months they could do it by July 15 2020 so if you are in a specific situation where you basically you, you know that you're not gonna have the money to pay by April 15th wait until July 15th right so that gives you extra time to be able to get get back on your on your financial feed and allows you also to be uh, a compliant with the with the uh, with the guidelines having said that you need to still file the tax return you need to file you can still file it and not pay until the due date all right I'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, uh, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm very happy to have you today. Uh, we are talking about a very important topic here. Please, if you love the, the clarity and the quality of the content so far, please subscribe to our channel. We're trying to grow this community, the Sweetie Kiwi community. Share this content, leave a comment, and like the show. We want to talk to you now about number three. The third thing you want to do is you want to evaluate your finances. If you owe the IRS money, and unfortunately for you this is happening in a tough economy meaning there are fewer job opportunities there are fewer business opportunities you need to evaluate where you are financially speaking now when it comes to finances you have to think about your assets what are your assets what are the things you own right investment accounts cash in the bank equipment do you, do you own your home if, if the home if the home is fully paid off if the car is fully paid off so those will go in the category in the asset column of your balance sheet next you have to think about your liabilities right what are your debts short-term debts in other words debts that expire that, that are due within one year and long-term debts which are obligations that are due after one year if you do if you compare your asset and liability if you subtract your liabilities from your asset you get something called net worth and that is if your net worth is positive in other words your assets are more than your liabilities right next thing you want to think about is your income right are you getting uh, you getting a paycheck from a job are you a, a freelancer are you a business owner are you receiving dividends from from you know are, are you receiving royalties you want to list you want to indicate all sources of income and the reason why you want to have that is you want to compare your income to your expenses to see if there is some, some kind of liquidity gap in other words if you will be able to sustain yourself or your in your lifestyle over the short run right now when it comes to expenses that you have uh, you have two categories broadly speaking you have what are, what are called essential expenses so those expenses that are mandatory to live a normal life you know I'm talking about food rent utilities mortgages and then you have the discretionary the non-essential expenses those you can live without and still be fine so you want to basically and the the, the, the discretionary expenses cover everything from traveling to to movie nights to eaten out to you know now you want to also think about when it comes to your finances you want to think about your savings do you have a short-term saving account do you have a rainy day emergency fund right what is your job situation are you at risk of losing it are you comfortable are you secure in your job what is the overall state of the economy right even if the economy is tough certain pockets of the economy might be uh, things might be rosy 
So you got to think about that. You know, what are some of the big upcoming expenses? Are you expecting a child? You know, is your family expecting a child? Or, you know, are you planning something big? You have to think about those things. Again, this thinking allows you to do what? It allows you to plan your cash flow projections. And cash flows are very important when it comes to determining variable versus fixed expenses, right? Again, variable expenses could be anything seasonal, for instance, utility bills, right? Sometimes water or, or electricity consumption goes up and down depending upon the season or depending upon the number of people you have you have on, under your roof. And the fixed the fixed expenses, as I said earlier, are usually um, things like mortgage or insurance payments. Of course, some insurance companies revisit the payments every year. So this analysis here allows you to evaluate your finances. Next thing you want to do here is you want to request an extension. Now, to do this, you have to file a form called 4868, 4868. That's what the IRS called the application for automatic extension of time to file. You can get this file, you can get this form rather on the IRS website, or you can, if you file electronically, you can get it through the the uh, the provider's uh, platform. Now, the thing here is a lot of people make the mistake thinking that by requesting an extension, they're actually also, they're automatically also uh, getting an extension of the payments. No, the IRS is just allowing you to, to pay your, um, to, to file your, your taxes at a later date. And when you do that, basically they push the deadline six months ahead. So from April 15th, you have, they will authorize you to pay before or on October 15th. Having said that, you still need to pay the amount. You still need to, to estimate the taxes you owe and pay it. Otherwise, you, you are exposing yourself to penalties. All right. So this is the, those are things you can do. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're still here today to continue this conversation. And um, please subscribe and to, to our channel if you love the content so far. Please like it. Please leave a comment. We, we, we are always interested in uh, hearing from our beautiful listeners and viewers and audience members. Please also share this content if you believe this could help someone somewhere. Again, the idea here is to be proactive. If you owe the IRS money in a tough economy, you want to be proactive. Don't let things happen. You want to take things. You want to take your life in your own hands and uh, solve the situation. At least find solutions to, this, to the situation. The next thing you need to do is to seek an installment plan. Now, the IRS is very, very um, careful about approving this kind of plans. Now, you, you file this through Form 9465, and the official name is the Installment Agreement Request. You can do this. You can do it um, through the IRS. We can download the form through the IRS website, or you can download it on your service provider, uh, service provider's uh, platform if you file electronically. You want to prepare the, the you know your 1040, and you want to put the form 9465 on top of it. Now, there is anytime you request an installment plan, there is a 43 fee. For the IRS to set it up. Now, if you you have to owe less than twenty five grand, and you have to agree to pay it, to repay the obligation within five years. Now, the IRS will will review your your request. Sometimes it takes a few weeks. It could be a few months. But while they're reviewing your um, your request, remember that there are penalties. You have to pay, you know, penalty on the unpaid balance. And you have to also pay penalties for late payments. All right. Now, the, so you have some kind of interest because, you know, it's it's a debt. So you have to pay interest. Now, if it's 0.5% as of the date of uh, the of this show, now, when once the IRS approves your installment agreement, that rate helps. So it goes from 0.5% to 0.25%. All right. So this is actually, if you will, some kind of last resort strategy. If you can't, if you owe the IRS money, 
Another thing I want to talk about here is that you, you can also propose something called an offer in compromise, an OIC. Now, basically an OIC works this way. Let's say you owe the IRS $5,000 and you're, you know, and you know you can't pay it because you don't have the money or, you, you know, times are just tough. The economy is in shambles. Everything around people are filing for bankruptcy. You've lost your job or whatever. Whatever the, the situation is, you go to the IRS and say, listen, I know I owe you 5000 but I'm, I'm basically offering you half of that. I'm going to pay you 2500 and we call it quits. This is what it means. Now, this is something that is very hard to qualify for because, the, because you know, if they make it very easy, think about it from the standpoint of the IRS, if they allow uh, taxpayers just to walk away with, uh, with you know, with ha half of the, uh, of, of the tax due, a lot of folks will, will find an incentive to do that. So they are very, very careful not to accept the majority of, of applications, but also uh, just, you know, be very thoughtful and be very thorough about the application so you to increase your chances of uh, receiving a yes on your oic your offer of a uh, offer in compromise tell the irs you're willing to pay more than 50 percent generally our research here at the sweetie kiwi show we've seen that offers that tell the government to pay something between 30 and 70 percent have a higher chance of approval again it has to be under the right circumstances and also the IRS will evaluate the totality of the paperwork you submitted, not just one or two. You know, I'm talking about your income, your situations, if the economy, the whole economy is in free fall or if it just is just you. If you've had a lot of issues in the past in your personal life, they look at a whole set of things. All right. Now, before you file a, an offer and compromise, please think about your options. Think about what makes sense for you, right? Now, usually I would have advised you to 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 seek an attorney if you have the, the cash for it, but maybe you don't have a cash, so you don't have cash, rather. You don't have the financial wherewithal to get an attorney. So you want to sit down and explore your options. At least I hope in this show, I've given you the possible options you have to go through the situation. Let's just quickly recap today's conversation and give you again those options what to do if you owe the irs money in a tough economy you have six different things you can do you can do a combo a combination of those six things or just two one or two all right first you want to seek free legal help legal and fiscal help and, and as i said you can go to all those pro bono uh, attorneys you can go to your to your alma mater you can go to um you can actually reach out to some associations, some, to some nonprofits. Hold off on paying the IRS. Evaluate your finances. Consider requesting an extension. Seek an installment agreement. And the last resort is to propose an offer in compromise. All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening to this conversation. Please subscribe, share, leave a comment. And like this content if you really appreciate it. I will see you next time. And until then, remember, stay marvelous.